Hello! Hello! It's Red here, and today I'm going to be reading some r slash entitled parent stories. Are you ready? Here we go! Karen secretly films me jogging and shows the video to my boss. I recently had an emergency appendectomy and recovery has been slow. I had to take time off from my own athletics, but worse, from coaching in the kids' sports program I'm involved with. The experiences made me step back and realize I really built my whole identity around being active and healthy. So the hit my physical abilities took as a result of being sick, plus the healing process has made me feel lost. I've been working to regain the joy I used to experience from exercise without going, oh, you used to be so much faster with that. Or, your technique used to be so much stronger. Or, you don't fit in anymore. Or whatever else, and just enjoy myself regardless of the level I'm at. But ironically, the anxiety about not being able to do what I used to has made regaining those abilities difficult. It made me self-conscious about exercising in public spaces, but I was starting to finally get over it as friends convinced me the source of the concerns were all in my head. There's no way to get back to it other than training, so despite the anxiety, I started running again, as soon as the doctors approved it. I went to the local track and did just a few slow laps each morning, building up speed every few days. I've only just been authorized to add some sprints and body weight strength training to the mix. Occasionally there were other people at the track, but I didn't really notice because I run with headphones on and try to zone out in these lighter sessions. But, little did I know, my friends were wrong. It was not all in my head. I was being watched, and more than that, I was being judged. My absolute catastrophe level worst nightmare at the stage of building back my strength and speed. On Friday, I was setting up for practice at the kids program, and the head coach asked me to his office because a parent had a complaint. A parent I didn't know too well. Karen was there, and he said she had specific complaints about me. The meeting almost didn't happen because of Karen's initial refusal to put on a mask, required in our facilities for now, but eventually her desire to tell on me for whatever she thought she had me on overrode her freedoms to infect everyone. I was a bit nervous, as anyone is being called to meet with their boss over a complaint, but I figured it was a classic case of, my kid should start more, or I know my kid tried out as a midfielder, but I want him, her to switch to defense that kind of rules don't apply to me thing. But instead, I sit down in the office and Karen is playing my boss a video of me running on the track that she filmed from afar. It's surrounded by stadium style risers. I was horrified, both because no one is ever totally used to seeing themselves on video and because I was just embarrassed about how slow I was. But most importantly, because why was a virtual stranger, I'd met her personally maybe four times ever, filming me while I ran on my own time at a private facility. She then went on to explain that her eight-year-old son, one of the players on my squad, was lapping me in the video, insisting the coaches need to hold themselves to higher athletic standards than the young players if they want to prepare them for college teams. Again, her son is eight. Apparently her son would sometimes be running on the track while her older child was practicing on a nearby field. I never noticed, the kid is still relatively new and I don't pay much attention to the other people on the track. My boss patiently but firmly explained to Karen that my physical abilities are not the parents' concern and all personnel are closely managed by the head coaches who understand each unique situation and what's appropriate and that her son wouldn't be impacted. Karen then went on to say me being out of shape was probably connected to why I'd taken so much time off lately. Uh, technically yes, it's because I was in the hospital and complaining that the personnel changeover isn't good for the kids. My boss again reiterated that the head coaches hadn't changed or taken any time off and that I was still one of the most skilled in the area I instruct, so this was not her concern. She then asked if there was someone else she could speak to, but he explained that he was the owner and founder of this program, so no, there was not. I knew my boss was intentionally avoiding saying what had happened to me or even alluding to a health issue to protect my privacy, but I figured maybe being transparent to her would show her how ridiculous she was being and keep her tuition dollars in our program during a difficult time for sports clubs. But when I explained, she just turned to the boss and said, 
Well, maybe you should follow her until she's healed and bring on a healthy coach in the meantime. Because my son needs someone out there who can keep up with him. My boss respected what I was trying to do, but made it clear we weren't going further with that strategy to avoid setting a precedent of sharing coach's personal circumstances. Telling her why people take time off or what their health status may be is not her concern because the program manages that and makes appropriate decisions. She kept kicking up a fuss, but the coach finally told her he had to go back out on the field, back to her son and everyone else's kids. She started physically leaving, but continued fussing about how she was not satisfied and would not be recommending us to other parents. Pro tip, not the way to conduct yourself with people who make recommendations to scouts concerning family, culture, team interaction. The coach wasn't preparing to leave, instead he stopped her in her tracks to tell her if she f was found to be surveilling or otherwise harassing any staff members again, she would be perma-banned from the program. No games or practices, no team social events, no presence in our buildings, and no clemency. So that was pretty satisfying. Her son is a good average kid, and I'm glad the consequences were focused on booting her out rather than limiting his opportunities to have fun playing. So then we went out and had a great happy safe practice. This was still a pretty upsetting event for me personally though, and I'll never unsee that discouraging video of me running. But it was ultimately reassuring to know the other staff have my back. Leaving Karen in the dust is just another step on my road to recovery. Uh, completely understand how much anxiety comes from recovering from something. And good on you for getting back out there because that is the hardest part to start up again after you've had to stop. Okay, here is our next story. Racist entitled mother thinks black people can't own nice cars and people can't smoke on their own property. I was walking my dog and I see a black man washing cars, Mercedes and Aldi, I don't know the model names, and a white man smoking. I turn, then I see what appears to be moving trucks, and I was like, oh cool, a new neighbour, and chose to go and see if they were there to introduce myself. At the time I forgot that somebody had to move out first. I then see a car pull up near the house. A woman comes out and I say hi. She replied hi and she was quite polite. I asked her if she was moving in and she said yes and that she just came to check on the person moving out and to check on the house. I replied, oh that's cool. Well, I'll see you around and walked away. I came back to the road and see the black man and white man again. I do rounds in my neighborhood. I then see the lady from before, the entitled mother. She spotted the white man and asked if smoking was allowed in the neighborhood. To which he replied, yes, safely on your own property. She scoffed, then turned and saw the black man who was washing his cars. I was walking away at this point when I heard her a screech. I turned around in terror to see her screaming at the black man. Conversation goes as follows. Who did you steal those cars from? Nobody. I bought these cars with my own money. No, you didn't. People like you can't afford those cars. I jump in and say, yes, he did. I see him washing them every day. Shut up. You're too young and naive to understand. Ma'am, the white man cut me off and said, would you like to call the police? Yes. I was confused, but the black man and white man looked at each other and I realized something was up so I kept quiet. So cops show up and they ask for documents and security footage, which the black man happily gave, and the white man gave his security footage. The shock on her face when she was wrong was priceless. Yeah, aren't you happy she moved into your neighborhood? Did you enjoy those r slash entitled parent stories read by me, Red? If you did, please give the video a like uh, because it actually helps me out when you like the video. And please subscribe too if you haven't already. Thanks so much, guys. Bye.